Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and today it is part two of our building a boat trailer for this boat right here. Now that boat is currently being worked on by one of my 11 year olds, and it's going to look pretty silly if we don't have a trailer to put it on. And as I mentioned in part one, I chopped up the original trailer thinking I was never going to build the boat. But if you rewatch or watch part one, you'll see why I wasn't too concerned about losing that boat trailer because you can you can see a hint of it in the picture. It was just basically a steel deck and boat trailers aren't usually made that way. However, I kept all the little bits and pieces such as the axles and the wheels and the fenders. So what we're going to do today is work on building the basic chassis and the framework of our new boat trailer. So here we have the basic ingredients of our chassis. We have, this is our set of axles and the leaf springs. We have our two side frames, and yes, I know they're quite a bit longer. They're going to be trimmed up after I get things together. This is one of our cross members. I've already glued that together. And this is our tongue. Once again, it's quite a bit longer. We'll trim that up once we kind of get things glued together. And of course, we have one more transverse piece. So, I've got my one of my favorite glues here. The Causes Burst Effects in California glue. So, let's see about gluing this together. All right, and there's our basic chassis glued together. Now I'm going to add a few gussets in places. And of course, there's going to be, according to our plan, there's going to be another couple of beams running along here. And that's what the boat supports will actually sit on. But I think this is a good start. Now I will just put this down and stop playing with it so the glue can dry. And then we can move on to the next few steps. Okay, now we're back to the clutter zone. And I'm ready to start putting some gussets on here. And keen-eyed viewers will notice that the axles are actually about a half inch farther inboard than you last saw them. And it's because once the glue dried, I'd look at them. And I thought, no, no, they need to come forward a little bit. This is one of the wheel backings. I popped it on just so I could see how the wheels were going to fit, make sure they weren't going to interfere with the frame. Unfortunately, they don't come off once you put them on. So... I won't be test fitting the other ones. I know they're going to fit fine. So to put the gussets on, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a, a rectangle of plastic that's quite a bit larger than what I want. And hopefully I don't unglue my main joints here while I'm putting this on. But I've just roughly cut this to size so that it will cover everything I want it to cover. And then once the glue is set up, I'm going to come back later and I'm going to trim it down and that'll end up giving the effect of uh, a piece of metal that was properly cut to shape and sized, welded in place. And we'll flip around the other side here. And of course, this will hide all of my sins of imperfect joints and stuff like that. I will be putting a little bit of putty on so that when you look at it from the sides, it doesn't look too rough either. And this has the add benefit of actually, it really will reinforce the joint. Give that a good squeeze. All of the other gussets are going to be made in a standard way, basically cutting a one centimeter square piece of styrene and then 
cutting it diagonally to make a di or a, a triangle out of it. And you can see how that's going to fit on there. Now these ones I won't be trimming to size after I glue them because I figure that's the sort of thing it would probably be left slightly large to give you the strengthening effect. Let's shimmy this in place. And it's not centered. That's how fast this glue is. <laughs> there we go. So this is the way each of these joins is going to look and you're going to be able to see a little bit of the, the gusseting effect and that's what we're after because we want it to look like this was made in a welding shop because most trailers like this aren't made in a uh, in a factory with assembly lines. They're usually made uh, kind of custom fabrication wise in small lots. All right, so there we've got all of our main frame gussets in place, top and bottom, and they hide a world of sins. Next, I'm going to be trimming this to, to size and shape, putting a little bit of putty in the join so that it looks welded instead of basically jammed together. If we look on these parts that Ravel give us, they've got this little ledge coming up on both of the pads. And if you leave that on, you end up having to uh, put these onto your trailer in a very, very precise location in order to get them to work out right. And I was kind of fiddling with it and trying to get it right. And I thought a real boat trailer wouldn't have these little ledges. It just relies on the angle of the pads to position the boat correctly because of course obviously it gets strapped down and held in place. So we're going to be taking off these little these little nubbies here and that'll make my life a little bit easier, I hope. I'm going to be trying to place them so that they sit approximately here. And if I space it a little bit wide, um, that will give it a little bit of a positive seat when it sits on the trailer. Now here are those front gussets after they've been trimmed. And all you have to do is just follow the, the main beam and you'll get the shape you're looking for. The next thing I'm going to do is, you know, some of where um, I joined these pieces of plastic together, there was a little bit of uh, material squeezed out. So I'm just going to take my flat cutter blade and I'm just going to run along like this. And that's going to plane it down. And anything that ends up being a bit of a gap, I'm going to put a little bit of Tamiya putty in and sand that down. And all that will hopefully disappear once we spray paint it white. And the other bit that's got to be addressed is right here. And it'll put a little bit of putty in that spot there. Here you can see the putty that's been added to the areas where it's a little rough. And then some longitudinal beams have been added that are going to support our boat supports. And I've given them a quick test fit. It looks like they're in the right spot. Hopefully when I put the other parts on, everything will line up the way I want it to. All right, now we've got the, the cradles in place. And I've already test fit the boat to make sure that the, that the engine is going to clear the ground. Because unfortunately, Ravel has molded the engine in the down only position. It would take quite a bit of modification to make it swing up. And that part of the project is my daughter, so there's no point in making that more complicated than it has to be. Next, we'll be installing the fenders. I've already cleaned this one up, so it should just fit on there nicely. The other one still needs to have a little bit of surgery done on the back end from where it was cut off the original trailer. Okay, it took a little bit of cleaning up where I had cut it off from the original boat trailer. But... The mounting actually went quite well. You can see how many parts of the original trailer have gone into the new trailer. But I think the effort was worth it, really. And even if I hadn't have chopped up the old trailer for parts, I think I probably would have been tempted to rebuild it anyway. Just because, like I said, this is the sort of trailer you see all the time underneath the boat. You don't usually see one with a deck. And... That's how well the wheel fits underneath there. And that looks good as well. Hopefully you can see this. What I'm doing right now is I'm just shaping the part of the tongue 
that actually fits on top of the ball at the back of the vehicle. And I've done some filing to round this off because this part is actually typically made out of a piece of stamped sheet metal and then it's riveted onto the, the tongue. So I've put this piece of plastic around here and I'm going to ferret in using some putty just to look like it fits over top of the main part of the, the tongue. And then that will later on, once everything's been painted, it'll be painted more of kind of a grayish silvery color. There you can see how I ferreted it in with some putty and I'll sand that down and hopefully make it all look like one piece. Something else which needed to be glued on is this tower. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it'll have a winch mounted on the top of it. So what you use when you're putting the boat onto the trailer at the boat ramp and the cable would go back to the boat. And they usually lean forward a bit and they're usually braced with some sheet metal. So that's what I've tried to achieve here. I think maybe I could have made my tongue a little bit longer. Now this piece here, this is from the kit and this is for the landing gear. And that will glue on there. All right, here's a boat trailer back from the paint booth. And I just used an old can of trim clad white rust paint because that's what was easiest. Now there's going to be a lot of uh, detailing painting done in other colors as possible. I'm probably going to paint the springs a silver color. The wheel backs are going to be painted uh, probably a dark gray. The insides are going to be painted black so that they show well behind the, uh, the spoked wheels. So it's time to get on to these detail parts. All right, this is the start of the winch for winching the boat onto the trailer. Now the spool is made up of two uh, old style metal end scale railway wheels that have been pulled off their axles flipped around and put so that they're outside to outside together. And this is a really good way of if you ever need to make pulleys or anything like that, it's a great way to make pulleys. You can also use HO train wheels as well this way. And then the rod that you see there in the middle, that's actually going to be the axle that the handle will come off of because on the real ones, there's a gear reduction in there. And there's also a ratchet mechanism. I'm not even going to attempt to put that in there, but basically, you you spin the small hand or the handle, you turn the small axle, and that gives you the necessary gear reduction for you know for pulling your boat in. So that's the start of our winch. And here's the handle that's going to be glued on the side. All right, there's our winch mounted on the post. And I think it pretty much serves the bill. The only problem is, is I don't have any fine twine to wind on there. But the real star of the show is supposed to be the boat that's sitting on it, so let's not forget that. Now these pads are usually covered with some fabric or some sort of carpeting or something like that. Generally, whatever the cheapest material I got laying around. So I'm just going to use some Tamiya khaki to paint those, just because that's the color that's popping into my head. Alright, the pads have been painted, and I deliberately was not careful as I painted along the edges, because I want it to represent some carpeting that's just basically been stapled in place. And it's going to have ragged edges and things. Like I said, I don't believe when they make these trailers, they actually uh, buy the carpeting new. I think it's probably they just use remnants or something like that. Now I've also glued on, let's get it on the center here. I've also glued on this part here. This is also from the Ravel kit, and it's basically the landing gear. And it is really quite well molded. And the surprising thing is, is they give you this, but they don't give you any winch to pull the boat on. Uh, either they don't know that that's something that you require, or once again, it's just all part of this strange uh, boat trailer that came out of somebody's imagination. So anyway, this part's been glued on, and it's going to be painted kind of a dingy grayish silver color because that's sort of metal that they use for those things even though it generally starts off bright silver it quickly oxidizes to uh, a dull grayish sheen 
Same thing with the very end of the tongue, the part that goes on the, the trailer hitch. That's a separate part that's riveted in place, and it will be kind of a grayish metallic as well. Now the fenders do come with reflectors molded in place, and I've just given them a touch of silver paint. I'm going to come back later, put to me a clear orange on the front one and clear red on the back one. Now the springs themselves, I'm going to give those a coat of Humbrol gun metal. I like that for things like springs and, and metal that doesn't usually get painted. It's usually one of my favorite paints to use. However, this particular bottle seems to be awfully thick right from the factory. I don't know what went wrong, but it hasn't been quite as well behaved as I usually expect from this paint. I've mixed up a little bit of Tester's Neutral Gray and some Tester's Steel. Hopefully that'll give me a gray color with a little bit of metallic in it. We'll see how it looks once it dries. Now, if you've ever built a truck model by AMT, or Ertl for that matter, you'll oftentimes get several of these sprues included. And they're awesome because they've got all kinds of different truck lights and marker lights, trailer lights, and things like that. So you don't want to throw these away if you ever get a hold of them. The ones we're going to use are these ones here, these rectangular ones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back them up onto a thicker piece of plastic because, you know, unless it was built in the last four or five years, it wouldn't be LEDs. It'd have just a regular light bulb in there. Once the glue dries, I'm going to cut these down and then I'm going to paint the white plastic around the edges black and that'll represent the, the housing of the bulb and everything like that and it'll just leave the reflector and the lens at the on the outside red. And there's our taillights stuck on and you can see how the the basic plastic part has been beefed up with a with a black base. You know the, the previously painted marker lights here have been painted to me orange and red. It's a clear orange and the clear red on both sides. And hopefully it shows on the landing gear there. Let's get my hand in behind it again. But most of it is painted that shiny gray color. The exception of parts of the handles and the, the column there. That's been painted steel or lighter coat lighter colors of aluminum. Okay, there's the boat trailer completed. I think it turned out even a little bit better than what I was hoping for. Certainly I'm a lot more happy with this than I would have been with that uh, bizarre looking trailer that Ravel gives you in the kit. The overall lines are the same. It's almost exactly the same shape and size overall. The only difference is now It's a skeleton, the way boat trailers generally are built. And they're built that way to keep the weight down. You know, you don't have anything more there than you absolutely need to. Now, I've got it on this piece of cardboard just so that you can actually see it. Because if I didn't, and you're looking at it at the white tabletop, you'd have a hard time differentiating it. So... Why don't we bring out the real star here, the real reason that we need a boat trailer, and that's the boat. I'm Natasha, and this is the boat I built in 124th scale. It is from the Revell Gun Fishing Set. We spring painted it trim clad white. The other colors were by Testers, Humbrol, and Tamiya. I didn't like the fishing chairs that came with the kit, so I left them off, so it is more of a pleasure boat. My dad helped me with the decals because they were old and brittle. I added the Royal Canadian Air Force rondelle because I thought it would it would look cool. Maybe the boat's owner used to be in the Air Force. I hope you like my boat and the chair my dad built for it. Thank you for watching Dave's Bottle Works and until next time keep modeling.